Today is the final of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Welcome to the Al Bayt Stadium and Al Khor City. Yes, indeed, a very warm welcome to you wherever you are watching to the last of the 32 matches in what's been a hugely enjoyable Arab Cup tournament. The 10th edition of this competition, but with a new look this year, having come under the jurisdiction for the first time by FIFA. North African neighbours Tunisia and Algeria have made it through to the final, a Maghreb derby that is certain to provide a thrilling climax to this test event as part of Qatar's preparations to host the first World Cup in the Arab world next year. Well, these supporters will bring terrific noise and energy to this occasion. Supported their respective nations so well. Two teams who will hope to be back here in less than a year's time. This just one of the eight magnificent arenas that will stage the World Cup in 2022. The wonderful Al Bayt. Tunisia and Algeria were two of ten group winners that have got through to the playoff rounds in the CAF region. The ten group winners will be paired into five two-legged ties, the winners of which will determine Africa's five representatives here for the World Cup Finals. Tunisia looked very good in the early stages of the group phase. They got their place in the quarter-finals with a match to spare. Although they did lose, so Morocco did that with a match to spare. Tunisia just had to wait a little longer to back their place in the last eight. Our wonderful aerial shots here of this wonderful Albite Stadium designed to resemble the tents used by the nomadic peoples of the region. It's quite spectacular. The biggest of the six stadiums being used for this tournament. And recently, house the biggest ever attendance for a football match in Qatar when the hosts played the United Arab Emirates in the quarter-final there were over 63,000 inside this stadium Algeria came through their group as narrow runners up to Egypt you probably argue that Tunisia have had the slightly easier run to this final in terms of the effort that's been expended. Algeria had a tough match in their final group game against uh, Egypt. And then that memorable win on penalties against Morocco, a sensational quarter-final that was. And then, of course, they got the better of the hosts, Qatar, after 19 minutes of additional time were played in that match semi-final at the end of normal time. Remarkable. And it was in the 15th of those 19 added minutes that Algeria got the penalty eventually. It was scored on a rebound off the goalkeeper by Mohamed Youssef Balayli. That was the goal that's brought Algeria through to this final. High anticipation of a really excellent showpiece. The last of the 32 games here. I think whenever these two meet, even if it's in friendlies, there's still plenty on the line. And just for the record, Algeria have won the last two friendly meetings. The most recent 
was uh, in June this year. Nigeria running out 2 0 winners. Many observers fancy them to win this final, but many predicting it's going to be a very, very close contest. Just coming around to 5.45 in the early evening, local time, kick-off just over 15 minutes away. After the completion of the final, there'll be an awards ceremony and a spectacular fireworks display as we greet the arrival of His Highness, the Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamid Al Thani. Greeted by the president of FIFA, Gianni Infantino. His Highness the Emir enjoys sports. Football fan, he's the owner, of course. I'm sure you are aware of the French Ligue 1 club, Paris Saint-Germain. Wearing a broad smile. And the smiles have been wide and very noticeable. The Qataris proud to be hosting this 10th edition of the Arab Cup, first under the FIFA umbrella. And His Highness the Emir will now move to his seat. Greets the audience inside the Albite. Today is Qatar National Day. Terrific action at this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021, particularly in the knockout stages. It is Tunisia and the United Arab Emirates heading into the quarterfinals. And Oman can celebrate going through to the quarterfinals. Rafit again! Oh, what a volley! Qatar have the goal that secures their passage to the knockout phase. From Morocco, a real statement of intent from them. Tayyip Meziani, the victory's wrapped up now for Algeria. That's a lovely run through. Is it a second goal? It is for Yazan, and that is that. We've reached the quarter-finals of the FIFA Arab Cup. And in goes Ali! Is he caught there by Gassi? Will be a penalty, I think. Joyous scenes here. Qatar, they have beaten the UAE five goals to nil. Tunisia up against Oman. Tunisia not going to cross, it's another goal! Tunisia to put their place in the semi-finals. Egypt take on Jordan. Ships it into a dangerous area, lovely header! And that is it, Egypt are through. Morocco against Algeria. Snapshot from distance, oh!
now is the final piece of action of the 90 minutes. It has to be. Is he going to go for goal? Slitty drives it across. Oh, it's in! Tunisia have won it with the very last touch of the semi final. A penalty in the 105th minute of normal time. If he scores here, Algeria are in the final. Oh, it's in! But it's in on the rebound. Unbelievable! Quite astonishing action in the knockout stages of what's been a brilliant tournament. The FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. And the stage is set for this North African derby. between Tunisia and Algeria. A lot of Tunisian and Algerians uh, live here in Qatar. A decade ago, the Tunisian population in this country was around 6,000. It's something like five times that number now. Down on the pitch, you can see the Amiri band. We've been entertaining the crowd here pre kickoff. This is how Tunisia reached this final. Very, very late own goal. Got them through that semi final as you've just seen against Egypt. Talked about Algeria's demanding route particularly in that quarter-final against Morocco, and that late, late winner against Qatar to eliminate the hosts. Giant flags of the two nations. Brought out onto the playing surface, about to be revealed. Day for Algeria and Tunisia. Close proximity, they share a border, these two countries in northwest Africa. The sheer fact that they do. This Your Excellency, really special occasion for the fans gentlemen. of both nations. Please welcome to the pitch FIFA legends Ali Al Hadzi and Marcel Desai carrying the FIFA Arab Cup trophy. Marcel Desai, World Cup winner with France in 1998. FIFA ambassador holding the Arab Cup trophy. Nawaf Al Temiat alongside him, former Saudi Arabian midfielder who won the Arab Cup in 1998, defeating the hosts Qatar in the final. And what a wonderful trophy it is. The base of which is solid gold. So to the players who will fight it out for the big prize.
Yassin Brahimi, very important player for Algeria today. So much quality in both lineups. I think we are guaranteed a terrific match. It's an all-North African affair, the final of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021, a Maghreb derby between Tunisia and Algeria at the magnificent Al Bayt Stadium. Just about ready for the national anthems. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please rise if you can for the national anthem of Tunisia, performed by the Amiri Band and Saber Al Rabai. <laughs> لقد صارخت في عروقنا الدماء نموت نموت ويحيا الوطن حماة الحمى يا حماة الحمى هلموا هلموا لمجد الزمن لقد صارخت في عروقنا الدماء نموت Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the national anthem of Algeria, performed by the Amiri Band and Abdul Qadir Japoni. <laughs> قسماً قسماً بالنازلات الماحقات والدماء الزاكيات الماهرات والبلود اللامعات الخافقات في الجبال الشامخات الشاهقات National pride very much on view. This is going to be a sensational atmosphere. As Tunisia get ready to face Algeria.
the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 trophy. Let's take a look at the lineups in Tunisia. One change from the semi final. It's an enforced one because centre back Yassine Maria, who's been an ever present in the lineup in this tournament, picked up a nasty knee injury in that semi final. And it's Naeem Sliti, number 23, who will come into the lineup. Sefadin Jaziri is the leading scorer in the tournament with four goals. And that has been very much the way Tunisia have lined up on the way to this final 4 2 3 1. 52 match officials in total at this tournament under the leadership of the chairman of the referees committee, Pierre Luigi Kalina. 12 referees, 24 assistant referees, 16 with video match involvement, VAR. And Germany's Daniel Siebert is the man in charge in the middle. Christian Dingert, his fellow German, will head up the VAR team. Two coaches meet, Mondaire Kebaya, Tunisia and Majid Bouguera of Algeria. And Algeria also make one change from their semi-final success against Qatar. Defence has had a very familiar look to it, but the change comes in midfield where number 18, Hussein Murazag, replaces Zakaria Draoui. Nine Baghdad Bunja. He's got two goals in the tournament and a wonderful goal scoring record with his Qatar based club Al Sad. Quiet smile passing the lips of Mondaire Kebaya. Excited like we all are ahead of this final. Majid Bouguera is the A team coach of Algeria. Jamel. Lamy is the head coach of Algeria, but this being something of a hybrid squad for Algeria. As Bouguera has the touchline duties. Both teams shorn of their European base stars, but still plenty of quality on view. Away we go then. Tunisia in the white strip, tagging the goal away to our right. And immediately have a throw just by the corner flag. Chetty has been a regular left back in this tournament for Algeria. One of the players who was named in their last World Cup squad. Fair to say that Tunisia are facing a dynamic front four for Algeria in the shape of Baleli, Bouja, Brahimi and Meziani. But they are a good side defensively, I think Tunisia will need to be tonight. But equally, they've got players at the top end of the field who can damage Algeria. It's Chetty making a really good run here. Our first corner in the final. Really good foot race between the two number 20s there. And uh, Drega just getting to Chetty at the expense of this Algeria corner. Drega's injured in that challenge on Chetty. He actually arrived late for Monde Kebaya. Didn't get here till December the 5th was out of the two first, first uh, group stage matches, the player wearing 20 for Tunisia. And the white strip, I remind you, as they face the game's first corner. And taken by Baleli. Back in by Brahimi, but straight into the grateful gloves of Moaz Hassan.
pass in and the goal way to our left didn't start the tournament Ben Mustafa was the first choice goalkeeper but the belief has rather been that Hassan is better with the ball at his feet as Tunisia like to play out from the back now they're playing in and around that Algeria penalty area but handball given against uh, Sleety Chetty. Jazir. Wins the free kick. Scored in every group stage match. Severin Jazir. Certainly the tournament's leading scorer award will go to one of the players out here in this final. Given away cheaply by Tunisia, Brahimi. Referee right on the spot, Daniel Siebert gives Algeria the free kick. Easily to spot Hannibal Mejri with the... Shock of curly hair. Playing in the attacking number 10 role for Tunisia. Where's number 10 on his uh, kit? Only 18 years old, attached to the English Premier League club Manchester United. It'd be a big stage for him to really catch the eye. A teenager. Brahimi, meantime, over the Algeria free kick. Good area, the header doesn't really trouble Hassan. Then they had to move a muscle there, the goalkeeper. Two countries who not only share a border but a passionate sporting rivalry. Derby's going to have some bite in it at some stage tonight, you would feel. As Tunisia ask a question. Now they're asking for a free kick. Nothing doing, says our German referee. Well, considering we're only six minutes in, the game has been quite stretched early on. Dreger. Trying to win a corner. And he has done that. Tunisia's first corner of this final. Will be taken by Sleety. Couldn't read the bouncing ball, but possession remains with Tunisia. Two 
teams who are very attack minded. This is uh, Bunja. Good defending. Excellent defending there by Bilal Eif. Nice control high on the chest from Bunja, but Eif got to him very quickly. Brahimi. Ben Lamry scored in the semi final, the centre back. Two goals in this tournament, two goals in two appearances. Another corner here for Algeria, earned by Hossein Benayara. This is club football in Tunisia with Etoile Sportif. There's a number of Esperance players in each of these squads, so a lot of club teammates pitted against one another in this final. Benayada takes the Algeria corner. Tunisia defend it well. And Sting in the volley. From Hussein Mrazag. He's come up from the A-team to figure in the senior international Algeria side in this tournament. Mrazag, and he's impressed. 21. Certainly, the window of opportunity was there for a number of young players brought up from the A team in both squads. Those who'd not figured in the senior international picture in recent times because of the fact that the Tunisians and Algerian players that are based with European clubs were not called upon for this Arab Cup tournament. So, excellent opportunity for. Others to stake their claims going forward. Initially for the African Cup of Nations, which starts next month. And then those World Cup playoffs for both Tunisia and Algeria in March. Andrea Pirlo, Marcel Desailly and Cafu. There's a trio of very famous faces watching on. Got three fifths of a very good five a side team. There's Mejri. Dreger. Look to take on the Chetty here. Tunisia running a free kick. Referee says play on. Tunisian fans not happy and felt that Mejri was caught. It's inside the penalty area. VAR will be having a look at this. It's a trailing leg from Chetty. There's certainly contact there. VAR having a look at it, of course. the ball first is he just losing his footing a little bit before the contact however much there was of it arrived that's what the officials would have been looking at that's the way the on-pitch referee had to adjudicate directly without seeing a replay of course Daniel Siebert his fellow German in the VAR booth Christian Dingett having another look. Did Chetty's right foot just tangle its way around the shin of Mejri? Discussions that were had are well and truly over. There's no penalty for Tunisia. David Beckham. Interested on looker too. Surrounded by famous faces here at the Albite. 
Free kick now for Tunisia. Got three players down momentarily. Final's opening yellow card shown there to Chetty. Chetty, first player to be booked, he's one of the Esperance players in Tunisia. So he knows his opponents very well tonight. <laughs> Tunisia free kick will be taken by Naim Sleety. He's in Saudi Arabia with the El Epitac Club. Nicely <laughs> flanked free kick, getting the header off the bar. And Bolly was beaten. Tunisia so close. <laughs> Mejri tries to dance his way into a shooting position, denied that, and then free kick given against him. Belel Eif, so close to getting the opening goal in this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 final. Couldn't have met it any better. Had the beating of Mboli, but not the Algerian crossbar. Ben Lamry. <laughs> Incidentally, Tunisia have not lost a competitive game against Algeria in 34 years. During that time, there's only been four competitive meetings, all in African Cup of Nations qualifying or in the finals themselves. Tunisia have won all four of those matches. Bunja, the target of the searching ball. Still striving to get a touch, can't do so. Rahimi. Rahimi shuffles away and the ball was taken. Again, the referee the perfect angle to make that decision. Well, he had eyes on attacking that Tunisia penalty area. A loose one from Jaziri. Bunja. Balele. Score of that. Sensational goal in the quarter-final, of course the winning goal in the semi-final. Mohamed Yusuf Boleli couldn't do much there. Free kick against Ben Lamry.
Nice approach play here from Tunisia. Oh, and it's wide of the goal. His heart would have been beating fast there, Benayada. Felt that he needed to shake a toe at this, and he needed to with Jaziri pressurising him. He got it well wide of his goal in the end. Just a corner for Tunisia. But that really was smooth approach play from the Tunisians. They're beginning to exercise a little bit of control on this final. They've been so close to the opening goal. And here they come again. And Bully needing to help that over. Good effort from Sleety. It's a save the goalkeeper will expect to make. Nevertheless, William Sleety showing good adventure. Very experienced goalkeeper, 35 years old now, Rice and Bolly. Football played in nine different countries. Daniel Siebert just delaying the taking of this Tunisia corner. He's got his eyes firmly on Benayada and Sess. He says, Look, I'm watching you. And in particular, Benayada has to be careful. He's the man doing the defending. Sleety's corner. And with another free header, Tunisia. And this time it's Montasa Talbi, the Russian based Tunisian international defender, plays for Rubin Kazan. He will be disappointed with himself that he didn't head that down and on target. Good chance. Support in there, Miziani wide. Glorious chance for Algeria. Couldn't have done any more. Bunja with a cross. Miziani's there first. Well, that should have been 1 0 Algeria. goes across the goalkeeper he's got much more of a target in which to hit went for the near post and missed it remains goalless it could easily be one each That chance, Meziani trying to make up for it. It's some kind of assist, but he couldn't wrap his left foot around that sufficiently. Injured himself in the process. Nigeria number seven, another of the Tunisian-based players in this Algeria side. He's with uh, Etoile Spoudif. His first senior caps here he could have capped it off with a goal in the final. A lovely assist from Bunja. I think he has to score. Credit the goalkeeper for Hassan for diving out at him, put him off most certainly. As we approach the midway point of the first half.
Jaziri. Two for company. Find a way to that Algeria penalty area. Brahimi. Bunja. Awkward one to control that. High on his chest. And Tunisia get the benefit of the free kick. And we're seeing the quality that both teams have in terms of their attacks. And the respective defences having to work hard to keep this final goalless. To mobile number nine for Algeria, Baghdad Bunja. Really keeps defenders on their toes. Hannibal Mejri. Looking for Draga and finding him. Losing out though to. Eager Messiani. And again, Messiani. This is building up into the sort of final we expected. You attack, we attack. There's a bravery about the way both teams are playing here. around this arena, just about every Tunisian and Algerian who lives in Qatar is here. The stadium a mass of red and green and white. Algeria survey the scene through Bellaly. He's going to go for goal here, I think, on the look on his face. It's all at 25 metres, touch more. Slightly to the right of the Tunisia goal. Nigeria have a corner kick. You will notice that Tunisia are part zonal markers from set pieces. One two man marking, but the rest much in a line across the edge of their six-yard area. Nigeria looking towards the German referee for some sort of decision their way, but didn't look likely it will be a goal kick. Bunja was just claiming that Sess took him to the ground, but the referee was having none of it. Risking the back pass to Mboli. Mejri. Bilal Eif. Covering free kick has gone against Sleety. Lely working so hard to get back goal side. It's not just about glory hunting. 
Mohamed Youssef Bolaili has a real appetite for work. in this tournament. And a touch off Sleety. And a run by Chetty. Bellaley with the corner. Almost squeezed in. Hassan just getting his knee to that. He's curling inside the near post. Another Bellaley corner. Delayed. As you can see, there's an issue for Abdel Kader Bedrami. Sees that late, doesn't he? Drager, who masked his view of it, just happy to get his knee on it, could see the corner. Taken by Bolaili. Oh, there's a lot of free green shirts there. And that's down to the fact they were zonal marking. Taking up those positions on the edge of the six yard box, a lot of white shirts, and there was a lot of green shirts in space just inside the penalty area, and that's where Bolaili was aiming that latest corner. Stop singing, dancing, wetting all our appetites for the World Cup finals here in Qatar. The Arab world's first World Cup is 11 months away. First match will be here at the Alpine Stadium. Measure. All covered by Ben Lamry. Entertaining half an hour or so. Something of a surprise that we're still at nil nil. Brahimi, space in which to work. Balayli. Nice turn of pace there from Balayli. Brahimi! Still in there for Algeria, it's a good save in there from uh, Hassan. That's a deflected shot and it's out for a corner, Bunja with the latest effort. But Brahimi had a good sight of the Tunisian goal there, after excellent work from Bolaili. Tunisia just about survived. The deflected Buncha shot, which has led to this corner kick. Just look at the turn of pace here. Just accelerates away from Draga Bolaili. Picks out his teammate Brahimi. In time, the corner well defended by Tunisia.
Zuri trying to work off his own header and has produced the foul. Measury. Sleety. Drager. Down, the referee says that is not a free kick. This is Bellaley. Tags up for offside. Talked about the variety that Algeria get in their game. They're not uh, averse to playing those long balls occasionally. They like to build up through those combinations, but can catch the opposition out with those driving long balls from time to time. Front players are so aware. Foul by Bellaley. Incidentally, this man has just had his contract ended by Qatar Sports Club. He came just shortly after his late goal put out the hosts Qatar of this tournament. So he's effectively now a free agent. But there'll be no shortage of clubs wanting to pick him up. Mohamed Youssef Bellaley. Not trying to put two and two together, by the way, and suggesting that uh, because he his goal knocked out Qatar in this tournament, that his Qatari club brought an end to his contract. <laughs> it was about 24 hours after the suggestion in the ensuing hours was that they uh, parted on good terms. Measury. Drager. This is Sackney. Not seen much of the Tunisian captain up to now. A decent tournament, though. A couple of goals. Another of the players based in Qatar. Yusuf Sackney. Ooh, now then. Are coming together right in front of the referee there. Jaziri seemed to lash out. Well, I don't know what came into his mind there. Of course, VAR having a look at it. It's Ben Lamry who's down, but it, it just seemed to me that Jaziri lashed out. The play had stopped because it was an injury to Satney. Daniel Siebert of Germany, our match referee, is just trying to restore a little bit of peace down there. But you just wonder whether any action is going to be taken here against Jaziri. The referee has got a, a card out. Now he's trying to find out who he's going to call to him. VAR, of course, all the time is in the ear of Daniel Siebert. Christian Dingert, another German, looking to evaluate what they saw, but I saw just off the ball, we were looking at Sackney, who was... Ben Lamry was the player that went down. Now the referee is talking to his assistant, who probably had a pretty good view of what went on there. This is a nervous wait, as far as Tunisia are concerned. Sackney has been brought forward. Yellow card 
that's shown to Yusuf Sakni. Looks rather puzzled about that. Someone else being called towards the German referee. Here's Jaziri. He looked to lash out to me as Ben Lamry hit the turf. There's no official word from VAR that they're checking for any kind of red card here. It looks as though it's going to be a yellow for Jaziri. Top scorer in the tournament. Card of peace, Bunja and Jaziri. Bunja's pointing out what happened to him. Let's have a look. Well, Ben Lamry was injured in the coming together with Sackney. It was Bunja who was complaining about what Jaziri is about to do here. There, he lashed out. Referee's back was turned. Lip and on the upper teeth there of Baghdad Bunja. When you raise your hands like that, you are risking a different colour card, Jaziri. Got away with a yellow. Five yellow cards we've had in this first half. I told you it would be a derby with bite. Now VAR are checking for a possible red card. Checks over. Another Algerian corner. Quite a delay. Just adding to the amount of stoppage time we'll get at the end of this first half. And some, a lot of dramatic late goals in this tournament. Bellini with a corner. In by Chetty. Brahimi. Ziri, Sakni, now having to tread carefully. There's that lash out. The right hand of Jaziri. Jaziri's cross, looking for his captain. Simmering, isn't it? This one could boil over. The yellow card has been flourished there. Do well to finish with 22 on the pitch at this rate. Deemed to have been deliberate handball that by Mohammed Ben Hakmid of Esperance going against. Several of his club teammates in the Algeria starting 11 in tonight's final. Another 
disjointed finish to the first half. It's seen some fluid football from both sides. Chances have been there. Crossbar has been struck by Tunisia. Game's best goal scoring opportunity missed by Algeria. This is calling for strong refereeing from Daniel Siebert of Germany. Challenges are flying in now. Ben Lamry with the Algeria free kick. Left it in the end for Chetty. Fourth official, Matt Conger of New Zealand, out there with the board, showing a minimum of five minutes at the end of this first half. Five minutes at a time, five minutes. Smart turn from Brahimi. Solid defending from Tunisia, closed him out. This is Mejri. stoppage for an injury this time to Hossein Benayada caught by a flailing arm there of Sackney the five yellow cards that have been shown three of them have gone the way of Tunisia Key players as well, the captain there, Sackney, and the tournament's leading scorer, Jaziri, both on that, a yellow. Bunja as well, who will come into the leading category of Algerian players to score in this final. Playing the way out beautifully, then it's given away by Jaziri. Here's Brahimi. It's the third of the five added on minutes. In by Benayada. Too deep for Bunja. Wanted a better ball there from the full back. Here's Mejri. Field in Tunisia. Sleety. Jaziri. Shots on. Sackney, who drove it in. It's good movement off the ball that allowed the captain to find the time in which to deliver that. And a volley at full stretch. Looking as though he's feeling a knock to his left leg there. Dreger, oh, there's a real high 
percentage chance he was going to present that to Meziani. Just got enough on the header, Drega. That's a free kick given away by Algeria. Rolling around like he's been hit by a sledgehammer. Hair stroked, not much more than that. The referee has given the free kick. And the last of the five added minutes in this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 final. It's a Tunisia free kick. Their fans are raising the noise levels at the Al Bayt Stadium. From a similar position to this. Goal against Egypt. It's the same man who took the free kick over this one, Sniti. Nigeria defended initially, made sure he couldn't get the touch he required. Eventually, it's well over the top. Chale. So it would appear. Head into the half time interval goalless. What it's lacked in goals it's certainly made up for in excitement. A tournament that's been full of drama, full of theatre. Spectacular goals, a number of very late goals. Mobile Struck a Tunisian header against the Algeria crossbar. Bolly made a good tip over save. Messiani missed a glorious chance from short range for Algeria. Brahimi also close to opening the scoring. What's been a feisty first half here. With five yellow cards shown. Half time in the final. Tunisian nil, Algeria nil. جلال شوط أول متوازن بداية كان طيب المنتخب التونسي ثم عودة جزائرية شوط أول يعني يفي بطبع الدربيات ومباراة نهائية كبيرة عادي جدا مباراة فاينال صعيب ياسر باش نشوفوا كاليتي جو معناتها من لي دو زيكيب ثم برشا تونسيون ثم شد عصبي حاولنا ندخلوا بنفس الثوابت نتاعنا نحاولوا نتحكموا احنا في نسق المباراة نجحنا يمكن في العشرة 15 دقيقة الأولانية بعدين عادي جدا المنتخب الجزائري رجع حطنا في بعض الوضعيات الصعيبة نعتبر اللي شوط اول متكافئ جدا اهم شيء اللي نحن كونه لازم نبقاو في ثوابت تاعنا على مستوى نوعيه الاداء ونوعيه اللعب ونحطوا كره اللوطة قادرين بحول الله في الشوط الثاني باش نحطوا الفارق الشوط الثاني احداث الفارق روتك للشوط الثاني كابتن خاصه انه ربما قبل مباراه كل المؤشرات تشير ان المنتخب التونسي ربما يستفيد من عمل البدني افضل المنتخب الجزائري عادي جدا الشوط الثاني اكيد كلهم باش تتقدم المباراه زوز فرق خارجين من سلسله نتاع مباريات صعيبه مباريات رزينه باش تخلي الثقه نتاعها على المستوى البدني لكن نعتقد الجانب الذهني والروح اللي نلعبوا بها اليوم ممكن نتعوض التعب اللي شفناه دونك اهم شيء بالنسبه لي نحن نبقوا متوازنين نبقوا ثابتين نرجعوا الاليات الهجوميه نتاعنا على مستوى اللعب في في لي زانترفال في المساحات وراء ظهر المحاور نتاعهم قادرين بحول الله اذا كان عرفنا نعملوا التفوق العددي في المنطقه هذه بالمهارات الفنيه بالسرعه نتاع اللاعبين نتاعنا بحول الله ان شاء الله نعرفوا كيفاش نتحكموا في نسق المباراه نفس الشيء على مستوى الكرات الثابته اعطينا برشا كرات ثابته للمنافس عكسنا احنا اللي كرات ثابته اليوم نتمنى باش تكون اكثر فعاليه في الشوط الثاني شكرا لك شكرا, شكراً. So this is how the first half shaped up 
in the final of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Tunisia just edging the possession, Algeria edging the attempts on goal, but clearly seven of their attempts had five on target. So despite Tunisia hitting the woodwork in the first period, Algeria have been at closer quarters to that Tunisian goal more often, but it is goalless. Five yellow cards, the prospect of more. This FIFA Arab Cup tournament is going to honour the healthcare workers who have done such a magnificent job to keep everyone safe at this tournament. Following health guidelines, we owe them a lot for their diligence and professionalism. And they will be rewarded with medals And now, the 11 please welcome individuals to the lined up in readiness. FIFA president, Mr. Gianni Infantino, and the president of the Qatar Football Association, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Thani. والآن لنرحب إلى أرضية الملعب رئيس الاتحاد الدولي لكرة القدم إخواني جاني والسيد حمد بن خليفة. Gianni Infantino, the FIFA president making his way forward for the middle presentation. FIFA so appreciative of the work these people do. Without their hard work, their care and attention, we would not have realised the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 tournament. Once again, many thanks to these dedicated professionals. كل الشكر والثناء والتقدير لكافة هؤلاء المهنيين المحترفين. So the final of the FIFA Arab Cup, Qatar 2021. The all North African affair between Tunisia and Algeria. And everyone expecting an attacking feast of football from both sides. And it's certainly what we've had. Both clearly coming into this final, believing that they can win the trophy. Closest Tunisia came, Bilal Eif, with a header which thumped back off the Algeria crossbar. Very unlucky there, Eif, and Bolli had waved it goodbye. 
this stage of the match. Tunisia were forcing the issue. Naeem Sleety forcing a good save from Mbolli. Just have to make sure, the goalkeeper, that he helps this on its way. Dipping under the bar. Baghdad Bunja then produced a glorious cross for Meziani. You felt that he had to open the scoring there. But somehow Tayeb Meziani puts this clear cut opportunity wide. And that was a considerable let off for Tunisia. And then the pendulum was swinging in favour of Algeria. Lovely turn of pace here from Belayli. Took him away from Drega. Brahimi. Drew a good save, might have been a defensive touch in front of the goalkeeper there. Whatever, Tunisia defended it well, and then Gwinedja's deflected shot just wide. Brahimi injured in the melee, it almost led to the opening goal of this final. And then towards the end of the first half, Tunisia through their captain Sakni, going fairly close. Bolly at full stretch. No one so far has been able to make a breakthrough. The Arab Cup 2021 final in Qatar is goalless between Tunisia and Algeria. لأن الأسرار الرياضة قوتها وكل واحد بأسراره ما شيء يوقفه. Real magic.
series, co-engineered with Zeiss, Vivo. Welcome back to the Al Bayt Stadium and the final of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. And as we head into the second half between these North African neighbours, it is Tunisia nil, Algeria nil, Baghdad Bunja, Yassine Brahimi in a part. What's been good about Algeria in the first half, the tournament's leading scorer there, Jaziri. Maybe a little lucky to see a, only a yellow card and not a red for lashing out at Bunja. And what a times with this uh, tempestuous first half. First half that produced five yellow cards, worth reminding you of the players on yellow cards heading into the second half. Three of them for Tunisia. Ben Hakmed, Jaziri and the captain, Sakni. Two yellow cards for Algeria for Bunja and Chetty. An Arab Cup final come down to the smallest details. A very watchable first half that could easily have brought us three or four goals. I don't think the approach of either team will change. They think they've got the tools to break down the respective defences, which is good news for all of us, because it's Going to be an exciting second half, I'm sure, as well. Neither side making any substitutions at half time. Great cross. Bunja wasn't too far away from getting on the end of it. This prolific goal scorer with the Qatar club Al Sad, where he averages more than a goal a game. The Algeria number nine with Al Sad. Yeah, you heard right, more than a goal a game is his record. Nigeria starting the second half well. And this will drop for Benayada, he got right underneath it. Technique was all wrong there. Striker's instinct here, not a fullback, as this is uh, just didn't approach that with a great deal of confidence, did he, Benayada? A 
this tournament has really highlighted the love and passion for football there is in this region. Qatar is most certainly ready to host the big one. The Middle East's first World Cup next year. Exactly. Ben Hackmid. Sackney again. Ben Hackmid. Four white shirts waiting for the cut back here. Finds only an Algerian leg. More frustration from his teammates there for Bahamad. Ben Hackmid, who got into a really challenging position. Might have been an offside there. Sackney, flag stayed down. Eventually it did go up. Free kick to Algeria. Bolaley, he was caught. Shalali with the challenge. Bolaley will take the Algeria free kick. Just want to drop this right on the penalty spot. That would be the ideal place, I would have thought. I think it's fair to say that often down the years, Algeria have envied the stability, wealth and continental success of the leading Tunisian clubs, in particular Esperance. I've got representatives from that particular club on landed both squads tonight. First ever match between these two countries was played in 1957, that was pre-Algeria's independence. French colony, of course. The first official match post independence was in 1963. The same year when Tunisia became, became the first champions of the Arab Cup. Al Jaziri, just for a moment, looked like he might have the pace to get beyond an Algeria back line. Sackney. Sleety just losing his footing. Flag's gone up for offside. Another example of the assistants delaying the flag to allow the attacks to develop before flagging correctly. That Jaziri, or rather Sleety, had straight offside. it's going to be in this country in 11 months from now. No travelling to speak of for the players, they'll enjoy that. They'll really enjoy that. For a lot of them, they'll be coming in in peak condition, really. Be so early into a lot of domestic club seasons. With, of course, the World Cup taking place in the cooler part of the year here in Qatar. Obvious reasons for that. Algeria power forward, but it's more quality in the ball there from Chetty. After making a good initial burst. Players in the World Cup, just like here in this Arab Cup competition, will be 
thrilled at playing in these wonderful arenas. Now, just a little bit out of shape here at the back, Tunisia, briefly. Dolele. And still, heels for handball in there. Meziani can't control the volley, Algeria asking for a penalty. Chaleli's driven ball in, the arm is close to the body from Chaleli. Means he is likely to escape being punished with the award of an Algerian penalty, VAR. In discussion with the German referee Daniel Siebert. Still asking the question, Wunja did strike the arm. They are, are checking for a possible penalty. Nervous wait here for Tunisia. The lean of the upper body of Chaleli. The arm stayed quite close to his side. Does that mean he'll escape? What's the intent to aim the arm down towards the ball, i.e. arm to ball? There it is. It does stay tight in there, doesn't it? Checks over. No penalty. And the right call. In my view. here for Algeria. It will be interesting to see how Algeria last the course here in this final. They've had three punishing matches, Egypt in the final phase of Group D. A memorable game against Morocco and of course uh, that dramatic headline grabbing 90 minutes of additional time against Qatar and that late, late, late goal from Bellaly that's brought Algeria to this final. Measuring. up here for Mbolli. This tournament has provided a golden opportunity for Qatar to test preparations ahead of the World Cup. Next year, all the relevant infrastructure, naturally, they'll have learned some important lessons in areas concerning, for example, stadiums, training site operations, fan ID, all very important components to host a World Cup. You can move forward and fine-tune ahead of the Middle East and Arab world's first World Cup. Great anticipation ahead of it. All that fine tuning goes on ahead of any hosting of a World Cup. So much to organise and take in. 
this competition has really afforded the Qataris uh, some great experience. Now Bunja wants to go it alone here. Not far away, claiming a deflection. Referee says no, goal kick. A very direct Baghdad Bunja. Only one thing on his mind. Majid Bouguera, born in France, the Algeria coach at this tournament. Won 70 caps for Algeria, the nation where his grandfather was born. Almost getting the first low of this final. Mentioned uh, very early on how stretched the game was remarkably stretched in the opening 10 minutes both sides going flat out at one another substitutions might be key in this final in terms not only of the personnel but the timing of them Jaziri, the top scorer in this competition, but uh, all his goals came at the group stage for his coach, Kabaya. A bit of room now for Chetty. Best of crosses from Messiani. Now, Tunisia to good release from the goalkeeper, Hassan. Tunisian fans getting excited. Now their enthusiasm curbed by the stray shot from Sleety. He's entitled to take the drive on, though. Here's Chetty. Messiani. Keep this in. He's always stretching in order to do so. Meziani now playing down the Algeria left with Baleli giving a little bit more of a free roll, predominantly off the right hand side, but drifting into central areas too. Baleli, where he can best affect the game, that will be his hope. Here's Ben Hack, Mahmoud. Chaleli, Mejri. into a congested area there, Tunisia, but they do get a free kick. Foul on Sadi. fans making the noise at the Albright at the moment. The side lose their way. This is Messiani. Oh, suddenly popped up on the right-hand side again. Brahimi. There's Bolaili. Want to get this on his right foot. Support from Chetty. In by Benayada. Chetty once more. It's an excellent cross in. Chinese here defend it well. That was a very dangerous cross from Ilyas Chetty a moment or two ago, right across the face of that Algeria goal, or rather the Tunisian goal.
wonderful fans, they really are. Tunisia and Algeria. And the teams could not ask for better backing. This is what it's going to be like, everyone, in the World Cup. And only 11 months away. Can't wait. Chetty is OK to resume. Rahimi. Good job. Trying to find the run of Meziani. There's no foul. And that most certainly is. And the guard coming out here. It will be shown to Sess, for Johnny Sess. One of the Qatar base players who plays with the Aldo Hale for Johnny Sess. Challenge wasn't it? It's his final sixth yellow card, four of them to Tunisia. Ben Lamry. Oh, ambitious pass there from Algeria. Meziani trying to find a way through. Should be dealt with here by Hassin. Sporting, he puts the ball out of play, the Tunisia goalkeeper, because. Uh, Ben Hackmid has picked up an injury. Now we're going to get a substitution. Eziani is coming off. First substitution of the game made by Algeria. Eziani, who missed that glorious chance in the first half. And we're inviting Bunja Cross to still be thinking about that when he puts his head on the pillow tonight if his side lose. Sayoud is in uh, Saudi Arabia as a striker. One of those players really brought in from the cold, Sayoud, for this tournament. Normally, with due respect to him, he wouldn't normally be in and around a senior Algeria squad at the moment if the European base players had been here, but they're not. So opens a window of opportunity for others. Ball, ball out from the back, seized upon hungrily by Brahimi. Mejri has to be careful. 18-year-old deals with that well, should a cool head. of the pace of the game slowing. You can understand that, given the rigours that both sides have been through to get to this final. And tackles are now being mistimed on a more regular basis. Sure sign of tiredness creeping in.
miss him, would you? That is uh, some makeup a particular gentleman has on his head. Tunisia free kick then. Comfortable defending for Algeria. Come again, they won't get a corner, should be dealt with. And then Bolly. Cornered France, Raiz and Bolly. Over 80 caps for his country now, the captain. Benayada, Brahimi. <laughs> well, they've been niggled out by Mejri. that from Ben Lamry as we head towards the final 20 minutes of normal time remember the provision is there for 30 minutes extra time and penalties if needed to decide our FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 champions get their hands on a wonderful trophy who will it be Tunisia Algeria. Second half not being helped, I think I would say, by a number of stoppages for niggly little fouls disrupting the rhythm of both teams pace has certainly slackened <laughs> neatly done by Chetty at this moment in time very much on top I was talking earlier about the number of Tunisians that now reside in Qatar they've increased fivefold in the last decade Got a Tunisian school here, they've even got their own elected council, which operates under the supervision of the Tunisian embassy. Brahimi. from both teams going astray on a regular basis nobody really getting their foot on the ball and making any sense of it at the moment the change a split second though Jaziri it's an excellent pass Sleety nearly took it in his stride somehow a 
Nigeria emerge with possession. Driving run, looking to try and buy the free kick. Tunisia haven't got it away yet. Now it's safely with goalkeeper Hassan. Nigeria have had most of the attempts on goal, five to just one for Tunisia. And still just edging it in terms of possession. Stoppage for an Algerian injury. There's Khmer across to this near touchline to take on some liquid refreshment to rehydrate themselves. Huge amount of effort being put in here. You don't win trophies without that. As Vince Lombardi, the legendary American football coach, once said, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Derby. Still to provide a goal. The Margaret, by the way, just to plot a geographical picture on that for you, is the western part of North Africa and the Arab world. The region includes, as well as these two nations, Morocco, Libya, and Mauritania. That's some strapping onto the right thigh of Benayada. Well, uh, how much that's going to restrict his mobility. Delaney's now received his treatment. The border that Tunisia and Algeria share almost a thousand kilometers in length stretching from the Mediterranean up over the Oras mountains and into the Sahara and who's going in the history books with a goal in this Arab Cup final if anyone will we go all the way to penalties to decide it Nigeria have been already to spot kicks. Big roar from the crowd there. Qatar team, this Arab Cup, taking their place inside the arena. Won the third place match earlier today on penalties, getting the better of Egypt 5 4 on spot kicks. So they will be on the podium for the award ceremony later tonight. Now, space for Algeria. Trying to plug those spaces, white shirted Tunisians, and they do that to good effect. Game stretching again. One moment of brilliance, one mistake. Hope it's not a mistake in a final. It would be cruel on that particular individual or individuals. Let's hope it's a moment of brilliance that decides it. A lot of space here for measuring. Hard yards now for a lot of players down there.
Chetty. earlier today. Brahimi, so elusive. The defending's good. Got such wonderful close control, Yassine Brahimi. As the uh, Qatar players have had an excellent tournament, good preparation for next year as the World Cup hosts, of course. Nearly made it to this final before Brahimi and his teammates got that late, late, late. And I'll add another ten lates onto that goal from Bolaili. And his initial penalty was saved by the Qatari goalkeeper Al Shay when he tapped the rebound in for the ultimate winning goal. We were in the 17th minute what ended up being 19 added on minutes at the end of normal time. We almost played a full extra time. And that quite dramatic semi-final. Obstruction. No question about that. Pace there, Chetty. He's on a yellow card, by the way, so just been hoping the referee would give the free kick and nothing more. That's what he did. And about to enter the final ten minutes of normal time. Team would want 30 extra minutes, really don't. Pretty low on fuel. This is nice from Tunisia. The flag is up though for offside. Tunisian fans, one or two players in white shirts thinking they might get a penalty here. But the flag is up. Oh, a tight one. Was nervy these days with the rules that assistants keep their flags down, even if they, in their thoughts, they're, they're believing it's offside. Defenders still have to work those extra few seconds just in case. It wouldn't have been a penalty anyway, even if the flag hadn't gone up. It's a good challenge. But offside was the call. Both coaches pretty much keeping their powder dry in terms of substitutions. I think you can understand the thinking behind that. We've only had one replacement that came in the second half from Algeria when they brought on Sayoud to replace Meziani. Same 11 out there in the white shirts for Tunisia that we began with. Way beyond the time in a normal match in inverted commas where coaches would have brought on fresh players of course both coaches have got an eye towards 30 extra minutes so they're not making their moves yet of course the other side to that is get fresh legs on now and it might well make the difference well, we don't need an extra 30. Felix Sanchez, Spanish head coach of Qatar, highly respected in this nation for the job he's doing with the team. Four and a half years in the job and brought stability to the role. He was the third Qatar head coach when he was appointed back in 2017. Of course, won the 
Asian Cup two years ago. A lot of talked about the players finding it hard to get one foot in front of the other at times, but full credit to the referee's fitness, he's been all over the pitch. Daniel Siebert's had an excellent game. Now, Tunisia finding a bit of energy, Jaziri. Cheap free kick given away. Now that was a tired challenge. By Ben Ahmed. That's where Algeria were hoping that it would have been a foul. Lely offering something up to Drega. Attacking position. Let's see what Chinese can do from this set piece. Sleety over it. Six white shirts in and around that Algeria penalty area. Measury just hanging out a little deeper than number 10. delivery here. It's this Tunisia's moment. Julia spirit the ball away, only as far as Mejri. Free kick, another cheap one given away, this time by the substitute Sayud. Fights trouble. in full voice. Well, the height and depth on that. No white shirt was ever going to reach it. Best efforts of Eve. Sleety disappointed with that. Inside the last five minutes of the 90. Tunisia are going to turn to their bench for the first time shortly. They're going to bring on Ali Ben Rondani. To Algeria. Sayud trying to find Brahimi. Ben Ahmed will drift down for a corner, I think. Yes, it will. And it might take a set piece to find a breakthrough here. There's Ben Romdani. Midfield player, another of the Esperance contingent at this Arab Cup. Nigeria corner will be taken by. Benayada. Heels for handball. Referee says play on. Tunisia have it. Free kick given away by Ben Lamry. So Tunisia can make their change. Mejri, the teenager, is coming off. Acclaim from the Tunisian fans for the 18 year old attached to the English Premier League club Manchester United. Good future ahead of him, whether it's in England or elsewhere. Talented player, more experienced, Ben Rondani on as the replacement. Good 
tournament for Mejri. Best pleased by the Jaziri challenge there. Adrani, he'd be okay, I think, to continue. Looking for Bunja. Figured in the game for some minutes now. Baghdad Bunja has had no service to speak of in that period. Now, this is nice from Tunisia. We could really open up Algeria now. Glorious chance for Jaziri! Well, half the stadium think it's in. But it comes back off the advertising hoardings and presses the net. It wasn't inside, it was outside. But they opened up Algeria here, and Sefadine Jaziri had the chance to hit the headlines. Goes for the near post. Really had to go across the goalkeeper to the other side, didn't he? Opens up his margin for error if he did that. Never easy. In the heat of a final, so late on in a final. So just. Settle yourself over a chance like that for Jaziri. We're into a minimum of five extra minutes. This has been a tournament of very late goals, dramatic late goals. I wonder if there's another one around the corner. whistling from the Tunisian fans. Flags up for offside. Coaches, Monde Kabaya there and Majid Bruguero will be rehearsing the talk to their players, I think, ahead of what is beginning to look like it'll be 30 minutes extra time. I was hesitant to say it given the amount of late goals we had beyond 90 minutes, well beyond 90 minutes in certain cases. In this Arab Cup, free kick to Tunisia. Tension in the air. Nigeria could break out here, they can't. Tunisia have won it back quickly. And either of these teams fashion one good goal scoring opportunity and take it.
Benayada. Sayud, good reception of the ball there. Another card here has been shown to Ben Debka. Not one of those players carrying a yellow, he'll be pleased to hear. Yellow card number seven of this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 final goes to Sofian Ben Debka. He's in Saudi Arabia with the Al Fatah Club. About 90 seconds or so to go. Extra time looming large. Chile. Tunisia. Slightly better cross than that. He's defending here, though, by Benayada. He does that with ease. Close to 8 o'clock in the evening local time in Alcor City. We're 50 kilometers north of the capital, Doha. Watching Algeria trying to pinch it late on. A decent cross by Chetty. And five minutes of additional time are almost up here. But there'll be time enough for a Tunisia free kick. Zach, the offender. Tunisia not deciding to play the free kick into that Algeria penalty area. Green shirts, close ranks, and here's Bunja. And the sixth minute of added on time. Brahimi. Well, Ailey couldn't do it again, could he? Straight down the throat of Hassan. Well, that really would have capped off a brilliant tournament for Mohamed Yusuf Balayli if he'd scored there. Still remember that outrageous 40-metre volley he scored earlier in the tournament. So we go to 30 minutes extra time. A lot of tiredness in that second half. Not quite so many goal-scoring opportunities as we saw in the first half, so we go to an extra 30, Tunisia nil, Algeria nil. And this is where the physios, the masseurs, come into the room to get some energy back into tired limbs. Coach will be looking to impart some words of wisdom. And the players will be dragging very deep into their reserves here. And some punishing matches to get to this showpiece final for both Algeria and Tunisia. A lot of games in quick succession. had a good opportunity to score in normal time. Tunisia hit the woodwork. The first half header from Bilal Eif. Best chance of the entire final fell for Algeria and Meziani, who put a free shot from no more than a couple of metres out, wide of a post. 
Some volley. It's already been a hero for Algeria with a save in the penalty shootout. It's Morocco. And all being played out in this wonderful arena, the Alpite. Both teams have only made one substitution each. And I think they'll be glad they didn't go for more because certainly we'll see those changes, if not at the start of extra time, certainly during it. I did mention earlier that the timings of the substitutions for both these men will be key, I think. Plot their course to getting their hands on the Arab Cup trophy. Only five nations have won this competition in the past. Tunisia are one of them. Iraq are the record. Uh, holders in terms of the number of times they've lifted the trophy four times no less for the Iraqis Akram Afif had an excellent tournament for the hosts Qatar a couple of goals four assists but we await the emergence of a hero and hopefully not a villain to decide this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 final. So the captains will be brought together again for the toss ahead of the start of extra time. Nigeria turning to their bench before we get the 30 minutes underway. We're going to see Zakaria Drawi to replace the man who replaced him in the starting 11. The one change Algeria made from the semi-final. Mazag going off. Straight swap in midfield, this for Algeria, Drawi coming on. Change officially made by Algeria. On comes Drawi. Plays his club football in Algeria. There were a handful of those that came in the 23-man squad. They were initially going to bring their entire under-23s before they decided to strengthen it by casting the net wide to Algerians attached to clubs in the Arab world. Rahimi, one of them, but of course he's a senior international anyway. So extra time about to begin.
Nigeria in the green strip. Tap the goal away to our left-hand side. deal of pace in this extra 30 minutes because uh, there are so many tired players down there. This is as much a, a mental test as, as it is a physical one now. Glory is so close, so too is failure. Which of these two teams will take more of a risk, I wonder? Possession there, Algeria. Jaziri opens up now. Terrific defending from Chetty. Still got some work to do at the back, though, Algeria. In by Sleety. I was just talking about. Mental concentration needs to be. Uh, you need to be mentally strong here and switched on. But they weren't briefly at the back, Algeria. But now they come forward with Brahimi. He did inject a bit of pace in that attack, but didn't get the final ball right. Frustrated with himself. Decent player in his time, Majid Bouguera. Spent some time playing in uh, England and Scotland, amongst others. Bouguera also played in uh, Qatar with the Lekwia club for a time. Knows his country well. Tunisia just beginning to find some spaces now. Start of this extra time period, they're looking the fresher of the two teams, I would say. It's always stretching for that. Good offer, though, from Draga. Chetty, Yasin Brahimi. He's won the corner. Just getting a little bit of a second win by the look of it. 31 year old Yasin Brahimi. A good career, taken into France with Ren. Portugal with Porto, a spell in Spain as well with Granada. Nigeria into double figures then for corners. Is this the one that matters? Here come Tunisia. Brahimi. Bellaley, Brahimi, and certainly in the shape of Yassin Brahimi and Mohamed Youssef Bellaley, Algeria have got players to open the door, no question about that.
Gunja as well will come into that category. You look at the front line for Tunisia, it's a tired touch from Jaziri. You would think that Algeria have got more of the goal threat on the pitch, yet Tunisia have travelled into some challenging positions since we drifted into the 30 extra minutes without testing and bully in that Algeria goal. Benayada doing well. Decent ball out as well to Brahimi. Bunja wants it into his stride. Excellent channel run here from Bagdad. Bunja. Shots on now for Sayu. Didn't take it on. Why did he try and turn inside there? Wonderful opening. Spurned there by the substitute Sayu. Come Tunisia. First time shots on. Julian bodies in the way. Brahimi. He suddenly found extra energy. Yassine Brahimi is everywhere at the moment for Algeria. We have a free kick. But we could have had a goal. A moment or two ago. And they really opened up Tunisia. Bunja with the speculative volley. No support, so he thought he would take it on. Qatar National Day, this tense Arab Cup final still awaits its first goal. Sleety. Very much off balance in the end. After the initial good footwork, it's Draeger actually, I beg your pardon. Tunisia are going to turn to their bench again shortly. Mohamed Tugai is going to be coming on, but here come Algeria now! And there is the goal! And it's the substitute with a quite glorious finish, Amir Sayoud. There's no stopping that. And maybe no stopping Algeria. Are they on the way to the title under Majid Bouguera? Well, no wonder one or two of the Algerian players look towards the heavens, because quite frankly, a goal like that belongs there. Touch, two touch out of his feet, and he couldn't have struck it any sweeter or directed it any better. Flailing at thin air, goalkeeper Muaz Hassan. The player who passed up a good chance just a few moments earlier wasn't going to be denied there. What a moment for Amir Sayud. No senior cap before this tournament got underway. And now his name 
in the Algerian history books because at the moment it's going to deliver a very handsome trophy into the hands of Algeria. What have Tunisia got by way of reply? We've got a corner. still got time on their hands still got about five minutes or so left of the first period of extra time two guy I mentioned uh, was stripped earlier ready to come on he will come on now he will replace Mohamed Ben Ahmed and we're also going to see Saad Gugger who's a midfielder and he will come on in place of Fajani Sess Defender and a midfielder on for Tunisia. Defender two guy immediately looking to be a threat from the Mohamed Sleety corner. Goalkeeper comes, takes all the pressure off from Bully. about this tournament being one of late, late goals, but the quality of some of the goals we've seen here in Qatar, extraordinary. Bunja almost bulldozing his way towards an Algerian second there. And this tournament has lasted two and a half weeks. We could have had a goal of the season competition and a very good one at that with the wonderful efforts we've seen here. Tunisia trying to find a way through Algeria, they might now, cross just too high. And of course, Tunisia are going to leave absolutely nothing out there. Stretching every muscle, every sinew to Try and find an equaliser here. Heading towards the last two minutes of the first period of extra time. Obviously behind for the Algeria goal kick. Well, his heart will still be racing. Amir Sayoud. What a wonderful strike that was. Just whipped into it, and in a flash it was beyond Hassan. Brahimi. Tunisian fans, of whom there are more inside this arena than those sporting the green and white of Algeria, are silent at the moment, wondering what their side have got left. Another huge crowd inside the Al Bayt Stadium. Stadium which produced a record attendance when Qatar beat the UAE in the quarter-final stage of over 63,000. Never been a football match in this country with a crowd as big as that. We must be close to it again. Can Tunisia find a way through? Nothing doing for Sleety. Explaining to one or two of his teammates that things did open up a little bit for him there. Young and old here. 
absorbed by this final. just catching a boot on his way to making that challenge. Should be OK. Just trying to get some signals to the bench. Nigerian players, the message is that when Devka is groggy, he'd be concerned that he might have picked up a bit of concussion there, having been struck by the boot. Some lovely images from the Albite. I mean, two rival nations, but rivals just in the sporting sense. The brothers, really, in the Maghreb region. Tunisia and Algeria. Bully finding that too hot to handle. Run back really well by Tunisia. Just wouldn't get the bounce of the ball there. A little kinder. That might have been a way towards an equaliser for the team in white. at the end of the two minutes added on at the end of the first period of extra time he fiercely struck that by Ben Romdani so we're going to turn around in a few moments towards another 15 minutes in this extra time period time enough Tunisia. They don't want to concede again. They want there. Good solid defending by Chileli. Glorious crossfield pass. Pulls for handball against Benayada and Given. will be the last play of this first half of extra time. Surely this is going deep into the penalty area. Are they going to work it short? Can they get it into the box, I would have thought. Yeah. Five white shirts to hit. Shallow. It's easy defending for Algeria. We're away here with the goal scorer, Sayud. She's going to get support. A really stretched here, Tunisia. This is Bellaly. Brahimi couldn't find the room. And they got back eventually into some kind of shape, Tunisia, but just for a few seconds. The gaps were there for Algeria, couldn't exploit them. We reach half time in extra time. They had a goal. What a goal it was from Amir Sayoud. The difference at the moment. Wonderful stadium, wonderful theatre. Alcor City down by the coast. This city best known for its uh, fishing. Tunisia, 15 minutes to fish for a goal. Quarter of an hour ahead here for both teams.
players that have been out there since the start, dragging those tired limbs out ahead of the final 15 minutes or so to decide the winners of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. So Tunisia in the white. Need a goal. signs towards the end of that extra time period two or three occasions where extra risks will have been taken by Tunisia understandable in their position and Algeria nearly found a way to a second goal well, this is dropping kindly no sting in the shot really did drop kindly for Bugier Probably not the player that have wanted on the end of that chance. Jaziri would have come into that category. But it was the substitute, Bergur, who just didn't get hold of the shot at all. In the end, it was comfortable for Mboli. Nigeria have had more of the attempts at goal. 16 to Tunisia's 13, but seven of Algeria's attempts have been on target, just two from their opponents. Tunisia have seen a little bit more of possession. It was that thrilling strike in the first period of this 30 minutes extra time from Sayoud that has Algeria in front now. Bunja, goodness knows where he's getting his extra energy reserves from. Bit fresh as a daisy there when he ran into that inside left channel. by Ben Debka. Not much to split these two nations in the current world rankings. Tunisia 29, Algeria 32. But it is 34 years since Algeria beat Tunisia in a competitive match. Recent competitive games, I say recent, still going back over a couple of decades or so for matches in either African nations qualifying or in the finals themselves. There's been four of them, and Tunisia have won all four. But in the last couple of friendlies, the most recent, only in June this year, Algeria have won both those friendlies, so the recent form is with them. Bunja, it's caught there. Flags up for offside. Still giving the defenders and midfielders something to hit, though. Back down, Bunja. Change for Tunisia. Sleety off. On as his replacement is Ben Arby. Ahmed Ben Arby. Maybe with an eye to potential penalty kick taker if Tunisia can take us that far. Not looking likely at the moment. 
Stockport still, 10 minutes or so remaining. We'll not be giving this up yet, Monde Kabaya. He knows the quality still got out there on the pitch. Still working incredibly hard off that front line. Penalised though. Tunisia with Jaziri. Nice cut back. Oh, it's just wide. Only just wide by the man who's just come on, Ben Arby. They were getting ready to celebrate on the bench and in the terraces, wearing the red of Tunisia there. For some part of its travel, it looked like he was going to nestle into the corner. Struck it really well. Bolly wasn't getting there if it was inside the post, it was just outside. be a boost to Tunisia. They've created that chance for substitute Ben Arby. Desperately close to 1-1. One, one. Tunisia did bring one defeat on their way to this final. They were upset by Syria at the group stage and 2 nils scoreline. Nigeria undefeated on their way through. Remarkable conclusion to their Group D when they finished runners up to Egypt, the smallest possible margin. They were teams were level on points, level on goal difference, level on goals scored went down to fair play and the amount of cards that the respective teams have picked up in the group stage to decide that Egypt would finish on top. Mahimi into corner and eats up a few more vital seconds for Algeria. Donayana trying to direct the traffic. Territory. Have to believe that Tunisia will create at least one more goal scoring opportunity. Absolutely spent. Yusuf Sakli. He'll just be waiting his moment, I think, to try and find a good side of that Algerian goal because he can finish given the opportunity. Sakli. Trying to get on the end of this now, the captain. Well, the control. Good pass to. It's too high. 
Let's see what Ben Romdani was trying there. She's got too much elevation on it. And those fans are five minutes or so away from a big party. who's doubled up in pain there. Soldiers on. losing their way in midfield. Nigeria trying to break on them quickly. And do so as Luke's one from Brahimi. <laughs> How good has the referee been in this final, by the way? Excellent performance from Germany's Daniel Siebert. It'll be a corner, is it? Yep, that's out. Corner kick to Tunisia. Not before Algeria make a change. being given the hurry up by the referee. On in his place will come Mekdi Tarat. So he's in Qatar with the Al Garafa club, Tarat. Takes up an immediate defensive position. Meantime, Tunisia with the corner. Crossing position here. Oh! Bill Alif punches the turf in frustration. He's at full stretch here. How close is he? Didn't look like he was going to get there. He needed about an eight foot long right leg to have reached it. Something left here, Tunisia. That's a good pass. Crowd wanting a penalty, not the players. And eventually... The shot is well wide. Daniel Siebert making his position clear there. It did hit the chest. That's what he thought. Instant call from the referee here. Strikes him right in the midriff, Bedrani. Again, the referee with an excellent position to call that one. A low vantage point at the shot that was eventually well wide. Made sure he got his left arm out the way as he turned his chest into that. Bedrani did enough. And we're well into the last of the 30 minutes of extra time. And we'll, of course, be 
Some minutes to be added on. Rahimi. We're into a minimum of three minutes. Slip away from Monde Kabaya and Tunisia. Nigeria with a player down inside the Tunisia half. Of course, Tunisia are playing on. Treatment out there to Benayada. Five nations to have won the Arab Cup previously, Iraq. A record four occasions, Saudi Arabia twice, once each by Tunisia, the inaugural winners in 1963, Egypt and Morocco. It looks as though it's going to be Algeria's turn from North Africa under their A-team coach, Majid Bouguera. Taking the place on the touchline of the senior international coach for Algeria, Jamel Belmadi. Going to take any further part in the match. We'll get uh, Mohamed Tugay on. another 60 seconds to be added on but Algeria are almost there desperate to get the ball up the other end of the pitch yellow card for Brahimi won't worry too much about that have Tunisia got any time left? Must go forward early from Tunisia. Haven't got time to build up the play here. Surely it's going to be driven into the edge of the area. It is. Algerian squad ready to come on to celebrate. Tunisia have a corner, and they have hope. Goalkeeper coming up, Muaz Hassan. Now or never, you would think, for Tunisia. Can they take it to penalties? Good flight on that, goalkeeper struggling. Algeria defend it well, and there's no goalkeeper in there. It's going to be all over now for sure. The easiest goal you would ever see. 
Cue the party for Algeria. Yassine Brahimi with the freedom of the Tunisia half to run unchallenged and tap into an empty net. Algeria's night, Algeria's trophy. Tunisian anguish. What a great job Majid Bouguera has done as the interim coach here, the 18 coach stepping up to oversee the senior players who were here, the youngsters from his A-team squad who were called up. Quite a night for him. For everyone with an allegiance to Algeria. It's all over. That was the last action. Brahimi's runaway goal, and he's deserved it for his efforts. After extra time in the Maghreb derby in Qatar, Tunisia nil, champions Algeria 2. So the same scoreline when these two sides met in a friendly in June this year. Just moments after Algeria defended that dangerous corner, away went Brahimi. Little look round his both shoulders and a third look and said thank you very much. Imagine the delight coursing through his veins there as he ran free. But he found energy and extra time from somewhere, Brahimi. Extraordinary reserves of energy. The man of the match is the goal scorer in this final. Came off the bench to grab the glory, both personally and for his coach and his teammates, Amir Sayoud. Balele played a big part. With a couple of very important goals, both the quarter-final and the semi-final. Joyous scenes the players and the fans very shortly they will get their hands on the glittering trophy Seen Meria on the crutches who picked up a nasty knee ligament injury in the semi final. Only a watching brief for him. Been a regular starter prior to that. This glorious stadium staging another dramatic match at the FIFA Arab Cup. يحضر معنا أمير سعيود مباراة كبيرة تتويج باللقب دخول سعيود كان موفق أولا مبروك عليكم ماذا تقول عن هذا التتويج؟ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله على هذا التتويج نهدي وهكذا الشعب تاعنا اللي كان ورانا نهدي هذا الفوز بيان سور ما بديت فامي ولادي الله فامي سعيود كاع ويعطيكم الصحة الحمد لله يا ربي دخول موفق لأمير تسديدة رائعة وهدف جميل كيف قررت أن تسدد هذا الهدف؟ والله حاولت يعني صراحة عدة مرات باش يعني نركز أمام المرمى يمكن أخفقت في مرتين الثالثة جات الحمد لله يا ربي الحمد لله والشكر لله فوز على تونس فوز على المغرب فوز أيضا على صاحب الأرض والجمهور أداء بطولي لكم في هذه المباراة. أكيد يعني لي جوار بارك الله فيهم يعطيهم الصحة. نظن تتويج مستحق بحكم أن لعبنا ضد الفرق الصراحة المميزة الفرق اللي عندها مستوى عالي. الحمد لله دركا نفرحوا بهذا التتويج ونهديوه للشعب تاعنا نقول لهم بارك الله فيكم. شكرا جزيلا الأمير. يعطيك الصحة. منظر هارد لك 
المنتخب التونسي قدم مردود غزير مباراة متكافئة خطأ وتصويبة من خارج المنطقة كانت قاتلة كابتن منظر هارد لاك المنتخب التونسي قدم عطاء غزير في المباراة النهائية ديربي متكافئ لكن خطأ كلف المنتخب التونسي خسارة الكأس وتصويبة مرة أخرى من خارج منطقة الجزاء وخطأ موجع على غرار خطأ ضد سوريا من حراسة المرمى وخطأ الإمارات المباراة كانت منتظرة باش تكون تخي ديسبوتي ديربي منتخب جزائري منتخب كبير وظاهر مردود محترم في الكأس العربية هذه الأولاد ما قصروش في الشوط الأولاني في الشوط الثاني كان عندنا 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 عدة وضعيات كانت عندنا فرص كنا نجموا نسجلوا الهدف الأولاني آه اللي سجل الهدف الأولاني تقريبا خطا شوط كبير للتتويج آه عموما الباركور كان نتاع الملاعبية كان محترم برشا مبروك للمنتخب الجزائري وحظ ظفر المنتخب التونسي منظر اليوم المنتخب التونسي يعني كان في حجم هذا الدور النهائي تلك البطولة المنتخب التونسي كان ممتاز وفي نسق تصاعدي اليوم ربما هذه الجماهير راضية وتحيي المنتخب وتحيي اللاعبين رغم مرارة ضياع اللقب شافوا ملاعبية يقاتلوا شافوا ملاعبية مشاو للأقصى أعطاوا كل ما عندهم فرديا وجماعيا كانوا يستحقوا التتويج خاطر فما برشا فرص كانت عندنا موجودين باش نمشيو على مستوى 1-0 ما كناش موفقين في نهاية الهجمة كما قلت لك حتى المنتخب الجزائري زاد اجتهد هو بيدو في الاخر توفق في تسجيل هدف ثم هدف ثاني شكرا على هذه الروح الرياضيه هارد لك كابتن استاذ كوتش مجيد فور شور يو ار فيري فيري هابي توداي كونغراتيليشن الجيريا از تشامبيون فيرست وورد وات كان يو ساي الحمد لله يا رب العالمين ذيس از ذا موست امبورتون ثينك Thank you a lot. The players deserve a big, big credit. They do a very, very good games all the season, and we deserve it because we play just the big team. And you know, very proud of the player and all Algerian people and the fans need to be proud of them. They play all the game in the high level. They was concentrated today as a derby. You know, it was a tough game. And uh, as a uh, as a young coach, my first big trophy with my country. So. Congratulations for all the fans in the Zayer. We don't forget the people in Gaza, in Palestine also, this is a way for them. So pride for my player, pride for my country. To win against Morocco, Tunisia, Qatar, they were warriors in this competition. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I, when I say to the press conference, I say, to be the best, we need to beat the, to beat the best. And uh, Alhamdulillah, they did it. So we don't have time. We don't have time. We trained just two times before the camp, and you know, game after game, they was fantastic. A word for the fans here in El Beit and in Algeria. Excuse me. One word for the fans. Uh, we love them. We love them. Alhamdulillah, and enjoy the Zareen. Enjoy, uh, and we play for them. So Alhamdulillah. Congratulations, Thank, Thank you. Gailan, hard luck. المنتخب التونسي خسر اللقب لكنه كسب احترام هذه الجماهير التونسية الغفيرة الحاضرة جماهير العربية المتابعة عبر كل شاشات العالم في هذا المونديال العربي في هذه كأس العرب بالوصول النهائي وباللعب بندية كبيرة وكان قريب من التتويج. غيلان المنتخب التونسي خسر الكاس مثل ما قلت لكنه كسب عوده الروح المنتخب عوده الجماهير المنتخب لحمه في المنتخب الذي عاد يشتغل بشكل ايجابي وفي المستقبل كاس افريقيا وتصفيات حاسمه لكاس العالم ان شاء الله من اجل العوده هنا لقطر للدوحه لهذه الملاعب المونديالية الرائعة. أكيد عندنا عام بلا ديشيونس، لا نقول عندنا كوب دافريك على قريب وعندنا عندنا كاليفيكاسيون تاع كوب دو موند، وعندنا كوب دو موند من بعد، نتصور هذوما الكل يخليونا يخليونا قراب لبعضنا، يخليونا نخدموا قدام، نعرفوا 
نعرفه بالكاليفيكاسيون سيرتو ما ماهيش سهلة هذاك اللي ربحنا فيه وحدة وكيما قلت لك شرف ما تحبش So this is how the final shaped up at the Al Bayt Stadium, Tunisia. Always had the edge in terms of possession. But just look at the amount of efforts, almost equal between the two, but eight, four times as many on target from Algeria. So by that stat alone, worthy winners, you would say. Four yellow cards each, excellently refereed by Germany's Daniel Siebert. Commiserations to Tunisia, congratulations to Algeria. Please welcome the official trophy of the, so the FIFA trophy Arab Cup Qatar being brought out a very familiar figure on the left, the former the Brazilian captain, Cafu. Former winner of the Arab Cup the in 1998. And Saudi Arabian midfielder Nawaf Al Temyat, who won. The Arab Cup for this country back in 1998 beat the hosts Qatar. Trophy has a solid gold base, has Arabic letters embossed from the word my land. It also has the map of the Arab world. Smooth undulations represent the trade routes paved by Arab ancestors. Calligraphy of the tournament name in Arabic FIFA Arab Cup and holding a football. Quite wonderful trophy. Very shortly to be in the hands of Algeria. Trophy presentation will come after the various awards have been handed out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the stage the FIFA president, Mr. Gianni Infantino, and Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Thani, accompanied by dignitaries and members of the FIFA football family. So Gianni Infantino will be part of the award ceremony, of course, the FIFA president, joined by the Qatar FA president, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Thani. The president of CAF. Patrice As we get ready to honour the individual award winners. The winning team of the FIFA Fair Play Award from this competition is Team Morocco. As team so Morocco a final between no two teams in North Qatar. Africa. We applaud their also achievement has and send fair the play award, award winners them. from that region. Morocco have taken Al that award. It is a beauty, isn't it? It really is. FIFA will now honour the three highest goal scorers of the tournament. So now, the winner of the Adidas bronze boot, Adidas is bronze boot award Yazan goes to Jordan's Yazan Al Neymat. As he is no longer in Qatar, we applaud his achievement and send the award to him. Award will be sent to Jazan Al-Namat because he's no longer in uh, Qatar, the Jordanian international. Silver boot is going to someone who is here and who got the last the goal tonight. Of the Adidas silver boot is Yassin Brahimi from Algeria. Never gives anything less than 100% club or country. He's had a fine career, Yassin Brahimi, and wins the Adidas silver boot.
Golden Boot winner for the leading scorer in the tournament is also here on the losing side in this final. He'll be stepping up very shortly. Rossini poses for the photographs. The Golden Boot will shortly be in the hands of Tunisia's Sefadine Jaziri. The top scorer of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 and receiving the Adidas Golden Boot Award is Sefadin Jaziri from Tunisia. Well, he ended up on top with four goals, but he didn't score in any of the knockout stages. All those quartet came in the group phase. Important goals, though, to play a big part in getting his nation to this final for Sefadin Jaziri. Shortly be turning towards the Adidas Golden Glove for the best goalkeeper at this FIFA Arab Cup. More success for Algeria coming. The winner of the Adidas Golden Glove is Raiz Mboli. It is Raiz Mboli of Algeria. Who will receive the Adidas Golden Glove Award. And very shortly will get his hands first on the gleaming trophy as the skipper. for the third, second and best player FIFA will now at this Arab the Cup 2021 in Qatar. The FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. All the recipients of the next three awards are here. It'll be a big roar, I think, for Akram Afif of Qatar. Yes, excellent reception for a very good tournament for Akram Afif. Two goals and four assists played a significant role in getting Qatar to the semi-finals. The Adidas bronze ball is his. The winner of the Adidas silver ball is Mohamed Belali from Algeria. Sporting the Algerian scarf wrapped around his head and a quiet smile passing his lips. Mohamed Youssef Belayli of Algeria is awarded the Adidas Silver Ball. Who will forget that 40-metre volley in the quarter-final? And that late, late and extremely late goal in the semi-final. Big part he's played in the success. So to the winner of the Adidas Golden Ball. And to return to the podium, Yassine Brahimi. So to add to his Adidas Silver Ball, Silver boot, I should say, is added our silver boot. It is the golden ball for the best player at this tournament, Yassine Brahimi of Algeria. Now the officials will come forward to receive their medals. Officials of the evening's Arab Cup final match. Led by Daniel Siebert of Germany, had an excellent game in my opinion. At times it wasn't the easiest to officiate, got quite feisty, particularly in the first half of normal time. But he kept a lid on things and in his calm, professional manner. 
had a fine evening. As did all our officials here. Fifty-two match officials at this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Twelve referees, twenty-four assistant referees, sixteen with video match involvement, VAR from twenty-seven countries and six confederations. Many of them, indeed perhaps all of them, will be back in some capacity for next year's World Cup. Gianni Infantino has called in the cream. Congratulate the third place team of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. So to collect their medals as the third place team after defeating Egypt on penalties earlier today, 5-4 on spot kicks. The hosts Qatar, Qatar are on the podium in third place. <laughs> This is a nation that are accelerating in terms of their competitiveness. These players have been involved in a lot of football over the last couple of years. They've played in four different confederations. They were semi-finalists in this year's CONCACAF Gold Cup. They've played in the Copper America. Of course, they guessed it in one of the European World Cup qualifying groups to gain extra experience all Great preparation, you would have thought, when in 11 months' time they will kick off the World Cup that they will host. What a thrill for this generation of Qatari players. Many of whom came through the Aspire Academy and is producing some excellent athletes. A number of the squad born in Doha, receiving their medals 50 kilometers north of home in Alcor City, where the biggest of the six stadia in use for this Arab Cup has seen the biggest attendance ever for a football match in Qatar when these Qatari players met the UAE in the quarter-final and put five goals past their opponents by half-time and the game was over their moments, they had the disappointment of nearly getting to the final, but they can look back on this tournament with some pride. Coach last in line. Felix Sanchez who came through the coaching roles at that aforementioned Aspire Academy. Job well done by Sanchez. Nigeria supporters sporting some Qatari flags on National Day. Day in which all Qataris decorate their, most of them decorate their cars and houses with either the flag or other nation symbols. A very special day, December the 18th. Third place for Qatar. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the runners-up of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021, Team Tunisia. So, guard of honor, nice to see on the neighboring brothers of Algeria for Tunisia as they step forward as runners-up. Club teammates 
exchanging pleasantries down there because there was a number of Esperance players in Tunisia. Several of the Algerian squad play for Esperance. That's lovely, isn't it? That's unity. Football has the power to unite. Whatever their origin breaks through language barriers time after time after time. Disappointment on the faces, you would understand that. So close, but yet so far. For the first winners of the Aero Cup back in 1963, Tunisia, not to be in 2021. Shortly, Algeria will come up to receive both their personal medals and of course the trophy itself on the back of that will be a spectacular fireworks display to signal the drawing to a close of a memorable tournament the quality of football on display has been of a high standard We've seen some terrific goals First one in the final tonight, just adding to that list from Amir Sayoud. And the joy for the man who got the award, the Adidas Golden Ball for best player at this Arab Cup. And he ran free from inside his own half, unchallenged Yassine Brahimi, to make it 2 0 for Algeria. Monday Kabaya. for the FIFA president Gianni Infantino. Nice to see that a lot of Tunisian fans have waited to applaud Algeria as winners. Great sportsmanship. Tunisia runners up. They will very shortly vacate the podium. And leave the stage to Algeria. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the proud winners of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021, Team Algeria. Winners of the Arab Cup for the first time. I think Raïs Agouli has been told to maybe come up last to get his medal and then his hands on the trophy. We'll see. No, he's going to lead them up. moment for the 35 year old goalkeeper much traveled played in nine different countries Raiz and Bolly joined now by his teammates great platform to go into the African Cup of Nations for Algeria and the forthcoming playoffs to get back here for the World Cup finals themselves in 11 months from now Algeria and Tunisia were one of ten group winners in the CAF region. And those ten teams will play off in five two-legged ties to determine CAF's five representatives here in the World Cup. A lot of very good individual performances in a squad that was quite hurriedly put together it was originally going to be the under 23s but they decided to strengthen with more experienced players who perhaps moved out of the senior international picture for a few years but brought back into the fold 
with European base stars not called upon. And they gelled very quickly. of a memorable evening for Algerian international football led by their A-team coach Majid Bouguera special roar from the fans for the work he's put in Players gather themselves in readiness for their captain and goalkeeper, Rai Sumboli, to shortly step forward to be handed and now, the gleaming trophy. And for the presentation of the official trophy of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021, please welcome to the stage the Emir, His Highness. Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. His Highness the Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani makes his way forward for the trophy presentation. for the successful Algeria players. Special moment for them to be greeted by His Highness the Emir. Bouguera. Now, handing over of the trophy at the end of a memorable competition. Test event for next year's big one, the World Cup finals themselves. Algeria have emerged on top for the first time winners of the Arab Cup and this wonderful trophy in the hands of Algeria. A spectacular fireworks display above the celebrating Algerian players.
see you in 2022. The world will be watching. Many fans from many countries will be here for the first World Cup finals in the Arab world, hosted proudly by Qatar. Is the message see you in 2022 and everyone cannot wait 11 months away world cup qatar 2022 can i add my admiration for all the volunteers that have worked on this arab cup and give up their time to come here and Play a big part in the running of a smooth event. Well done to all the volunteers. And to Queens, we are the champions. Nigerian celebrations continue.
So to the highlights of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 final between the two North African neighbours, Tunisia and Algeria. Tunisia asking the early questions. What many predicted would be a very tight final, certainly the way it turned out. Sleety forcing a good tip over save from the Algerian goalkeeper Ray Sambori. It's a lively first half in which there were chances for both sides to score, not least Metiani here. Beautiful assist from Bunej. Bunjes uh, uh, cross, Meziani somehow put wide. Jaziri then had the opportunity to have given Tunisia an advantage, but not taken. He would be left to rue that miss as we went to 30 minutes extra time. The players were exhausted after a lot of matches in quick succession in this tournament even ahead of this final to go to an extra 30 minutes it was asking an awful lot but we found quality off the substitutes bench for Amar Zayud what a thrilling left foot strike that was no chance at all for Muaz Hassan in the Tunisian goal and Tunisia huffed and puffed tried to find a way back Sent their goalkeeper up in the dying moments, and look, nobody back there for Tunisia. And all the time in the world for Yassine Brahimi to run and run and run and gleefully round off his personal tournament and that of his team. And that certainly was the cherry on top of a delicious cake for Algeria. Goalkeeper in sight for the gleeful Brahimi. One look over his shoulder, second look, even takes a third. No danger. Defeat for Monde Kabaya, a delight for Majid Bouguera and his players. Final score at the Albite Stadium. Tunisia nil, champions Algeria two. So hope you've enjoyed our coverage, not only of the final, but the tournament as a whole. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Until the next time, goodbye.